Welcome to Powering Through Life, and I'm your host, Teresa Sims. Each week on Powering Through Life, my guest and I will discuss a special topic that is close to their heart. Together, we will explore the challenges they have faced in life and learn what strategies and tools they have used to power through their life. So welcome to Powering Through Life. Hey, and welcome today to Powering Through Life, and I have an incredible guest with me. Her name is Colleen Mitchell, and Colleen is an accountability and mindset life coach, writer, podcast host, and full-time analyst in the power industry. Ooh, which are there's stories behind that. She's passionate, showing others that our thinking creates our results and that anyone is capable of becoming resilient. She has. She also has type 1 diabetes and hasn't let that stop her either. Wow, that's a great story. Great, great beginning. Welcome, Colleen, to Powering Through Life. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm so glad we got to do this and got all the confusion over from before. So we're all good to go today, right? Yep. Perfect. And I like your topic. It's mind management, awareness, and awareness of our thoughts and changing our thoughts to change our lives. Ooh, good subject. Very good subject. And I love playing in that realm myself. So how has this idea and thoughts, excuse me, how has this idea that thoughts create results changed your life? So for most of my life, I lived very much at the effect of the world. So everything was something or someone else's fault. I didn't really have control or awareness of control over, over my emotions. Kind of a really specific example of this is using the concept of um, public speaking. So I, have, I had a historic hatred for public speaking. It's a, a great story that um, my last co- uh, class in college, the final was giving a presentation in front of both the class and our sponsors for the capstone project and our professor told us that we were not allowed to have note cards he told us that in the real world that you were not allowed to have notes and of course nowadays everybody has a teleprompter so he was full of it but the night before i brute force memorized the speech because i hated public speaking and the day of the speech i gave my part my i gave my part and then i froze up so for about a minute it felt like It was just spotlight on me. I wasn't saying anything. And then I just suddenly remembered what I had to say. And then I moved into it. And between then and I think mid last year, I was just, no, I hate public speaking. I don't want to do it. And then sometime in July, I just, I was tired of hating it. And so I just made the very powerful decision to offer to present at one of our next conferences at my workplace. And that was that. I made the decision. And I knew I was going to follow through on it. And so what switched was the thinking that I didn't want to hate it anymore. And I realized that I can choose to hate it or not. And choosing to not hate it, let me take the steps and feel the things that I needed to feel to take those steps to move past that hatred. And so I joined Toastmasters. Um, And since since the coronavirus, we've all actually moved Toastmasters onto Zoom. And so it's getting a lot easier to to interact on camera. I used to be really camera shy. So now I'm just like, oh yeah, camera, we're good. (laughs) And then, so the, the, the decision to not be afraid of public speaking anymore was really powerful. So now I I've presented in front of actually two conferences. Um, I'm going to be doing uh, a leadership webinar for my company based on the same thing. And so that decision, that changing of the thoughts, that was the, the point where everything changed. So you knew, base, and I know we can all relate to that not liking public speaking bit. Well, most of us can anyway. And I was right up there with you until recent this year. I joined Toastmasters as well. Isn't it fun? <laughs> yes, it is, except <laughs> it's, it's a little different right at the moment. But you, yeah. get to, you get to go in on so many different areas, different groups, I guess, when you're doing it virtually. It's, it's good. But uh, yeah, it, it, it's all about, you know, if it wasn't your idea, to give this speech, then yeah, it's not going to stick. If it's not your choice, I don't feel like doing this. So you find every excuse in the world to get out of it or 
destroy it or whatever. But And I've met a lot of people who they are delegated the task of speaking. And so that's also why they joined Toastmasters is because they have to as part of their job. And for me, I was just really sick of hating public speaking because I would watch TED Talks and I would be like, I really wish I could do that. And then I just realized that I could. Yeah. I mean, you, you, the sky's the limit in our minds, right? It's, it's when we get into um, putting our conscious thoughts, I guess, in front of it, mm -hmm. that things get in the way and things go sideways quickly. <laughs> yeah. It's a similar to another thing was I also hated running. I was, I always said, I'm not a runner. I can't run. And then I, decided uh, when I was doing a, a year's worth of 30-day challenges for one of those, or actually two of those 30-day challenges to be a couch to 5K because I wanted to stop thinking that I couldn't run. And so I did the couch to 5K and now I, I'm not, I'm, I don't consider myself a runner, but I know I can't run. So did you do the, the running? I did. You did? <laughs> I did the couch ah. to 5K. I actually won third in my age group for the race that I did. But after that, because there was no more goal to actually complete the couch to 5K and then a goal to actually run in the race, the motivation just kind of disappeared and I never really fell in love, in, in love with running. So I just stopped. But I, I, I showed myself and I proved myself that I could do it. And that yeah. was kind of the point. And does there need to be a really good end goal in, in, in the works for you before you'll actually take part and say, hey, this is something I actually really want to do? Because I noticed in the running, it was there was a goal, and then you said when you, there was no more goal. Yeah, it really depends on what I want to do. So right now, most of my focus is on changing my brain and my mindset towards a lot of things, like um, how do I look at money? How do I look at success? What does uh, progress actually mean? And there's not really a big end goal in mind. It's more... I can change the way I think to create bigger things in the future that I currently can't see. Right. And how do you go about doing things like that, um, Colleen? So I am in a program called Self-Coaching Scholars, and they teach you how to manage your mind by doing thought downloads, identifying all the thoughts that are in our head, and going through how there are only circumstances in the world. And we don't so circumstances can't make us feel anything. We have thoughts about those circumstances and those thoughts make us feel a way, a, a certain way. So somebody could say, he made me so mad, but he didn't actually make somebody mad. He said words and then the person had thoughts about those words and the, that thought made them mad. And then from the, that, that feeling, then we take actions. So a lot of the times when I'm stuck, I have to do a thought download and then I have to identify all of the thoughts that are causing feelings for me that are driving actions that give me results that I don't like. So whenever you have a result in your life that you don't like, you can always solve it with this self-coaching model, which is what Brooke Castillo calls it. Okay. So if you eliminate the um, unnecessary information from what you're looking at, then or the emotional aspect of it then you can actually look at the logical side of things is that how that works well in terms of identifying a circumstance yes so when we're talking about circumstances you want it to be as neutral as possible mm -hmm. so a fact if so a fact could be for somebody that a boss said words because that removes all the emotion out of it they may have said certain words like you're fired but those can be very emotive for people. So if you take out the emotion of the words you're fired and just put boss said words, that's a very neutral circumstance. And then from there, you can identify what did I think about this? What did that thought make me feel? And then what actions did I take and what result did I create? Right. So it really has nothing to do so much with the other person. It's, right. it's how all about you perceive us. it and what you do with it and how you let it control you or run away with you or... Yeah, it's very interesting, yeah. isn't it? Ooh, it's I really know. fascinating. I love, I love the, doing all those thought downloads and just seeing how they all play out. Because every thought has a different feeling or even the same feeling, but we can take different actions based on them. That's fantastic. So what does managing your mind mean to you? I think it's about being aware of the thoughts that we have, so that thought download, and being present with them, so just kind of allowing them to happen, processing them all the way through. When we have thoughts that generate those feelings, it's really important to be able to sit with those feelings and understand how they feel in the body. 
and allow them to be there, process them without resisting, reacting, or avoiding. Because we can do four things with emotions. We can resist them, react to them, avoid them, or allow them. And we want to allow them without doing the other things. Mm -hmm. So resisting would be like you're pushing a beach ball underneath water and the resistance will eventually breach your strength and then come up and smack you in the face. And we don't want that to happen. <laughs> and when, we're, when we react to things, it's maybe you're reacting out of anger, you yell. Um, avoiding things, you just, maybe you overeat to avoid the emotion. So we want to always just allow the emotion to be there without doing any of those other three things. That's amazing. I mean, there are so many intricately linked things that we do think, feel, hear, say, you know, all those sorts of eat, uh, whatever. And right now, especially, so many people are turning to food because they're bored and there's nothing else to do. There has to be more to life than just eating. I mean, there is. You know, <laughs> you know, my biggest thing is I say to my husband all the time, people who worked all the time, all the time, all the time, always wanted time off. Well, now they're given that time off. Maybe not in the way that we had all planned it. But what are they doing with it? You know, are they doing something constructive? Are they doing something fun and entertaining? Are they getting in touch with their families again? Like, you know, getting reacquainted, I guess, with their families and, and whatnot? Or are they just sitting there watching TV, eating food? Or They're probably uh, sitting watching Netflix. Oh, God. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. But you know what? If that's what works for that person, because maybe they just need to turn stuff off and that's all they can do for now. Yeah, we all have our ways, don't we? Yeah, and that's fine as long as they like their reasons. But as soon as they get to the point where they're wondering, why am I doing this? Then that's where something needs to change. Yeah, where did that month go? Right? <laughs> it used to be April. <laughs> I swear April took like five years to get over with. Oh, it, it was a long one, doesn't it? Oh, geez. But you know what? I think we've learned a lot about ourselves and a lot about the world. And yes, I think we're smarter and better for it. I actually learned that I'm way more social than I realized for being uh -oh. an introvert. Uh -oh. So I, I really miss all of my coworkers and my full-time job. Just seeing them in person, seeing them at the office, the cubicles, whatever. Just seeing people in person has been something that I realized that I need. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? There will be an end. There will be an end. To oh, I know. Yeah. And we'll all be back to some sort of normalcy, whatever that may be and whatever that may look like. And uh, we'll, be, we'll be fine. But uh, so what do you say that you can change your life by changing your thoughts? Why do you say that? Excuse me. Why do you say you can change your your life by changing your thoughts so it's like we said once we realize that the thought is the problem or that or that's the place to start then you can follow the model all the way through then you can consciously choose different thoughts to create different results so i have a belief plan as part of one of my goals and the most useful thought for me right now or the most useful belief is that this is an experiment so no matter what i'm doing it's an experiment and if I attach meaning to whatever I'm doing or the how I'm doing it, then I'm, always, I'm never going to get all the way through. So if I think of it as an experiment, then I'm not going to care how I get there because the how might come in a way that is completely unexpected. And that's usually how it happens anyway. Because if people get attached to the how, then they're going to be so attached that they don't want to let it go even when it's not working. And then they get all caught up in it. So you can and change. And never get to the end either. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when I say you can change your life by changing your thoughts, that's true for everything. When I, so before I didn't have that idea that this is an experiment and then I get caught up in the how and I get caught up in uh, all of the technical stuff and all of the little details and that never helps. All we need to focus on is the thoughts that we're having and then what feelings those create and then what actions we take and what results those create. Excellent. That's really good information. And where did you say you learned how to do this? So I learned all of this from Brooke Castillo. She has a, a fantastic podcast called the Life Coach School Podcast. Mm -hmm. And I'm in her program called Self-Coaching Scholars. Interesting. I'm going to look that up. <laughs> Changed this, my life. This sounds fan fascinating. I mean, I've done two life coaching certifications and 
you know, all, all CBT and, you know, mindfulness and all that sort of thing. But this is, I love this area. It's right where I want to be. And because I know we are in control, we have the, the opportunity to make the choice or not make the choice of how we're going to get somewhere, how we're, what we're going to do to get there. And, you know, we need to keep it in a positive, uh, happy, upbeat um, way so that we enjoy the experience of getting there. And when the end results come, it's even much more fun because we've had the journey. So we, should, we should also... Yeah, but we should also be uh, conscious of the fact that it's all 50-50. So we're all going to have 50% positive, 50% negative, no matter what. Mm -hmm. And so when we try to make everything positive all the time, then we kind of miss out on the contrast. So we won't really have... The, so reaching a really difficult goal, goal is going to be tough. It's going to be difficult and uncomfortable. And if we're not willing to go through that discomfort to reach the other side, then it's not going to be as easy as we think it would be. Mm, so good versus bad, all that kind of thing. We always have to have it. It's always in us. It's always everywhere, isn't it? Yeah. The good, the good, the good and the bad. It's just your choice which way you choose, right? Yeah. And if you're more willing to feel the negative, then it'll actually be less painful to feel the negative. Why is that? Because you're not resisting it. Remember, if, you, if you're resisting an emotion, you're pushing it down underneath the water, and then that beach ball is going to come and smack you in the face, and that's pretty painful, right. especially the longer you hold it down. So when we're willing to feel all the negative emotions, it's a lot easier to process them even faster, and so we're spending less time in that painful period. So negative emotions uh, actually do teach us something. Yeah. Yeah, and they show us a lot. Yeah, especially if you let them be with you, because if you let them be there, they'll pass a lot faster than you think they would otherwise. Hmm. Interesting. Now, do you have a personal example that you could share? Um, yeah. So my, um, the end of 2019 was actually pretty rough for my family. My dad unexpectedly passed away in November, and then my grandmother also passed away 53 days after that. Oh. So it was a, yeah double whammy with deaths in the family. And because I had binged Brooke's podcast for a year before that, I was a lot more prepared to handle all the emotional chaos than before. And so I've been able to handle it very well. It's still very sad. I'm still like handling the grief, but I'm not, I'm not wallowing in it and I'm not held back by it is the, the biggest thing is because I'm willing to feel it. What did the watching, um, Podcast, podcast you said have to do yeah, I, so um brooke's podcast is so full of really good information just for being free that all of the lessons i learned just from listening to her and applying what i learned from listening to her helped me get through it a lot faster and easier than i think otherwise would have okay yeah that makes total uh, a lot of sense because i know 2019 and the early part of 20 was not the best for me and uh, I had I not been uh, a trained coach and and know what I'm talking about and you know no cognitive behavioral therapy I would not have come out as well as I did so yes it was hard learning it yes it took a long time but oh my goodness had I not had that information I don't know where I would be right now. So I'm so thankful that, you know, we, we can come out the other side of it. And it just depends on the knowledge we have at the time on how fast we're going to come out of it and how well processed through it we, we become. Because you can say you go through it, but if you don't actually do the steps and do the work, then you're not really learning yeah, anything. Just prolonging it. Yeah, exactly. Because eventually it's going to come back and just slap you on side the head and say, wait a minute, I'm still here. Beach ball in the face. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. Oh, oh. <laughs> I used to wear glasses, so I can understand that it would be a real big disaster. But uh, yeah, that, that's fantastic. Now, um, you work with a lot of clients, is that right, Colleen? So I have a... Um I have a practice, but I'm not full with the practice right now. Mm -hmm. But it's you're doing well with clients, and they're having a lot of good results using this. Um, yeah, yeah, I yeah. think so. Oh, that's fantastic! 
That's fantastic. And is there a favorite quote or saying that you have that uh, you would find and like to leave with our listeners? Because, you know, sometimes I find the quotes that the people come up with are so profound. So I actually heard this one on Brooke Castillo's podcast. I don't remember who it's credited to, but it's how we think about things determines how we experience them. And that ties in with everything she teaches. It ties with every, ties in with everything I've experienced. And it's something I'm trying to teach at my company as well. Yeah, you know, there's, there's so much information in that one single sentence. It's just brilliant. And it is all in our minds. And, and yeah, it is all in our minds. But I mean, it, it affects our bodies. It affects everything else too. But it starts in the mind, I think. Yeah, because so, if you have a, a crappy thought about how something's going, then you're going to have a crappy experience. Well, yeah, yeah. Like it's raining today. I have to go shopping. And oh my God, I don't want to go outside in the rain. But you go and it's miserable. And you're miserable for the next six weeks because... <laughs> You got stuck in the rain and you had to stand outside because there was lineups of people. No, I'm getting curious. Are you talking from personal experience right now? Uh, no, actually. <laughs> no, I have not. My husband does all the shopping because we decided one person would be doing the out and the other person would not. So, um, yeah, he's he's not even experiencing that. He just, what I've seen from stores, you know, pictures of town and, and whatnot that are... Uh, a little overwhelmed and people are not being um, kind hmm. I guess but yeah that, that always happens doesn't it but uh, they need to think about this a lot more too we should get this yeah. message to them <laughs> exactly yeah that's fantastic so I am going to when your segment is up I am going to have all of your um, connect or your contact information with you with the segment uh, if someone wanted to get in touch with you right now how could they go about doing that so i have a website it's uh, inspiredforward.com and you can reach me through any avenue on there is the probably the best way to do it okay that is fantastic and you know i think uh you have so much that you know so much knowledge and such a, a bright insight into things i think i would like to have you come back as well in the future thank you yeah, wonderful. Well, listen, I won't keep you any longer, but I know this information has been valuable to, valuable to the listeners. It's been a long day. So we all have those, don't we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and what was the name of that coaching school again, the coach? Uh, Brooke Castillo from the Life Coach School. Life Coach School. Okay, thank you. I am going to check that out. I the podcast is amazing. Oh, Good to know. Okay, thanks. Well, Colleen, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you today. And, uh, you know, I'm going to get everyone to contact Colleen, ask for more information, get in touch with her. Since she's really not an introvert, she will answer you. <laughs> I am an introvert. That's just how I recharge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm the same way. But anyway, thank you so much, Colleen, for being with us today on Powering Your Life. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Take care. That brings to a close another great, inspiring interview on Powering Through Life. Thank you to my incredible guest for sharing your thoughts and wisdoms with our listeners. If you would like to connect with us, go to www.teresasims.com. And there you will also find all the previous segments from many amazing and inspiring people. Remember, don't be shy. Reach out if you have any questions or just leave me a comment. So thank you once again for listening to Powering Through Life.